Hi guys, it's been a long time since my last review. I have to ask sorry for those of you that are following this series. A lot of technical issues on my end, mainly internet related, and as a result a lot of work has fallen behind. In all this time I even actually missed out on uploading some older reviews on games like Infinite Crisis, which has been unfortunately discontinued altogether as a game. Anyways, not having resolved some of these issues completely, I do have some temporary solutions that should at least allow me to power through some new content. We'll see how it goes. That being said, welcome back to another Let's Play for Free review with me, your host, Hazard Reborn. In this episode, we will be taking a look at Blizzard's very own MOBA, Heroes of the Storm. Heroes of the Storm is the lame name Blizzard finally gave to its own entry in the MOBA scene, once known as Blizzard All-Stars, a name which I found to be much better than Heroes of the Storm, or the abbreviation HOTS, but anyway. Might as well call it Riders of the Storm at this point and give it an equivalent theme as well, huh? No? Just me? Well, okay. Be that as it may, I was really looking forward to this title, and for good reason I think. Although I'm not entirely happy with most of Blizzard's choices and strategies in the gaming industry, uh, neither with their games overall, neither its focus on a market of 14 year olds which they have admitted to. A MOBA title is something I believe they could really do well. For me, this is a title that suits them. And I don't mean that it suits them because it is a cash grabbing genre and that is all Blizzard cares about, well, that too. But what I'm mostly referring to is the style of the game design, which is one that truly fits in my opinion to the style of this new Blizzard direction that we have been dealing with for the last 10 years or more. It kind of feels as if they were made for this title. The question now is, is it any good? Well, let's take a look. For all of you not familiar with this genre, it is basically a team-based game where two teams, usually of five players per side, fight against each other on a map with the goal to push into their enemy headquarters, or core as it is in Heroes of the Storm, and simply destroy it to win the game. And that is pretty much what a MOBA is. From there on, it comes down to what strategy you will use with your team and how well you play together with the heroes you have all selected in order to defeat your opposition and their strategies and defend against pushes to your own core. The maps are usually laid out in a three-lane manner, meaning that there are three general paths from one base to the other, with a whole bunch of paths interconnecting them to help with the strategy from there and on. Now on to the more specifics of the game. Blizzard made this title once more with aiming at a younger market, as I already mentioned. As a result, there is in some ways a larger casual approach to the design of this title when compared to games like Dota 2. They have incorporated a little more team play in a way, and added innovative ways to keep players interested for both MOBA and non-MOBA fans. One of their general design approaches behind their title Heroes of the Storm is short matches. A match in Heroes of the Storm will last you from a rare minimum of around 12 minutes or maybe less, all the way up to a maximum of around 30, maybe 35 minutes long. Overall matches in Heroes average to around about 20 to 25 minutes long. As a result, this is approximately half the time it takes for, let's say, a Dota 2 match. With half as long matches, Heroes delivers in providing an experience which is rather fast paced and it is safe to say that it does cater a little more to uh, casual players that might not have the time to spend in a 50 minute long match or more. This is something that I can agree to, whether you are a casual or hardcore gamer. The reason is simple, you can get more matches out of your time and it is much less frustrating when you are stuck in a match that looks like a clear loss and is dragging out. I mean, a clear loss in Heroes won't last any longer than 15 minutes and that is much less frustrating than a 30 minute match whichever way you look at it. In that same time you have played two games in Heroes of the Storm. This is also very helpful for public matchmaking since you never know who you will be teamed up with. Overall, the frustration levels are smaller, whilst your focus in the game does not reach a tiring point. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for a PvP game that has one hour long matches, 
as long as they are interesting enough to take that long. And the fact of the matter is that in a MOBA, you are simply pushing into the enemy base. How much more interesting can you get than that? As a result, 50 minute games uh, upwards become a drag and they really tend to weigh down on your focus as well. In a much more competitive environment, these long matches are more common, meaning you quickly tire of the game in that form. Whereas in Heroes of the Storm, the match's length does not exceed your focus by much, keeping you on your toes and interested all the way to the end. Overall, I vote thumbs up to this approach. It does come down to a matter of taste in the end, but I have to say that although I enjoyed Dota 2 a lot, Heroes of the Storm has me wanting more and in all provides for a larger fun factor. This is very important for any game. On to other comparisons to the usual MOBA genre and my thoughts on them. Heroes of the Storm has a system that is absent a shop and items completely. It has none of that rune or glyph or I don't know what extras that League of Legends and Smite and also Infinite Crisis used to have and it all comes down simply to the hero you choose. It includes a recall button to get back to your base just like League of Legends and without a shop you have no means of teleporting to friendly positions on the map unless your hero provides such a skill on their own. To compensate for this in a way, each hero has a mount for faster travel, which ups the speed of the match yet again and balances back out. Another difference, and this is one of the biggest differences to other mobs, is the fact that there is no personal leveling system. In Heroes of the Storm, the entire team levels up together as one. To add to this, there is no kills versus assists in the scoreboard either. All assists and kills are counted together as one. Takedowns. Is this a good approach? The obvious conclusion to draw from these changes is that the game is dumbed down and oversimplified for casual users. After having played a fair share of MOBAs, I respectfully disagree. The entire dynamic that balances this all back out is the shorter matches. In an average of 20 minute long matches, having to deal with the shop, collecting money for items, checking the personal levels of your own team and the enemy team to formulate strategies based on those, and even being able to have a teleport that will get you back into the fight, are all simply too much for such a fast paced game. Not to mention that all that rune glyph stuff in League of Legends caters to a grind and slightly pay to win mechanic as well. Add to this map specific objectives present in Heroes of the Storm and it will be a mess if it included these mechanics. I'll get into those in a bit. As a result, the simplicity levels are the same as other mobs. And let's be honest, League of Legends is not exactly rocket science either, as it has formed an entire player base filled of people that were not gamers prior to this title period. Global team leveling helps in keeping the pace of the game intact as well as make it possible to create comebacks, which is a very important aspect to any MOBA. Heroes of the Storm tries to keep this element and with all their choices they have managed to maintain a pretty good balance in it. Global leveling, as well as the combined kills and assists into one, takedowns, caters to better team play. Arguments from these two changes alone are so much less, although people will always argue no matter what. It isn't as annoying as other games and resides around strategy alone and not the who of who of kills and assists. Again, it's probably wrong to keep comparing to other titles out there, but being an established genre with such successful contenders, I am assuming the question on most people's minds is not just is it a good game, but how does it compare to the existing MOBAs? And rightfully so. If Heroes has nothing to give aside from the same mechanics and experiences, then there is hardly any reason for a player invested in another game to want to migrate over. So, on to the comparisons I guess. I have played so many games in Dota 2 and League of Legends where the team is bashing on me because I have the least kills in the match. I think I made this example in the Dota 2 review as well for those of you that remember. A complaint which is pretty ridiculous since you can have the largest assists of the entire team thus clearly helped in all the kills that they achieved by simply taking the last hit on the opponent. And that brings us to the problem. The constant kill steal crap or KS that goes on in every other MOBA. People at this point fail to realize it is a team game and it makes no difference who gets the last hit. Such complaints are really ridiculous. And let's not mention the players that do nothing else but chase kills without realizing that for any mob, even Dota 2, K 
kills don't win the game. Taking down the enemy base does. At which point, I applaud Blizzard for this change in their own MOBA. It is by far one of the better changes they have made and it truly makes the title feel like a team game. Not once have I had someone bitch and whine over how many kills I have or cry out that I am kill stealing them or whatnot. It's a team effort people. The idea is to obliterate the enemy at all costs. And Heroes of the Storm does this perfectly. For those wanting a more detailed statistic on how they performed, there are total damage dealt scores as well that show you exactly your, uh, how sufficient you were in a match as well. To compensate for the lack of a shop and items, all heroes have access to talent trees of their own. You start with all your basic skills available to you, that being your Q, W and E buttons, and select talents that are passive or active depending on the strategy at hand all of which have been streamlined and added to that hero alone. Again, you don't have time to look at an entire shop and possibly make mistakes with buying items not for your character in these short length matches. And not having that option, which turns out to be quite useless in this title to begin with, is a grand mechanic. Not to mention that it's much better for quickly learning a character, and then from then on it has its own learning curve if you want to master them. While we are on the subject of talents and skills, every hero in Heroes of the Storm has a selection between two heroic abilities. You know, the big skill with the button R each hero has in each MOBA. This alone creates ultimately twice the amount of playstyles and options in the game, whilst changing a character's heroic can result into feeling like you're playing with two completely different characters altogether, at which point the amount of options in the talents and heroic choices man up to the same versatility more or less to a shop, yet much more accessible. And now on to the heroes of Heroes of the Storm. Heroes are unlocked with in-game currency or real money, keeping the grind in a Blizzard game alive of course, with optional colors as you unlock them as well as skins that are, aside from the master skins, available with cash only. The total roster for now is probably around half of the leading MOBA games out there, like League of Legends and Dota 2. However, it is also to be expected as it is fairly new. It is of course ever growing, and with the absence of a shop, new heroes are easier to add and implement, giving Blizzard a new hero edition pace that is much faster than other titles, which may in fact result in more heroes all up overall. Time will tell. The interesting thing about the hero selections to Blizzard's MOBA is that they seem much more versatile with regards to game design. Each hero feels much more refined to fit and suit his character rather than the basic game mechanics. For example, Rhaegar does not have his own mount. Instead, he transforms into a spirit wolf, which can also go into combat, meaning that he cannot be dismounted, thus he escapes faster. He can also come out of the spirit wolf form with a stronger attack as he turns back to his normal form. The cooldown is uh, the cooldown on it is much shorter and can be and cannot be interrupted, creating a completely different mechanic all up. Falstad is another hero that does not have a mount at all either, or perhaps one can say he has a permanent mount. He can fly to any location within a range that covers more than half the map in radius. In a way. He has a personal teleport mechanic with a large cooldown, uh, making him slower during all other movement and his entire playstyle quite different. Sergeant Hammer, again, is a slower tank for taking out buildings and whatnot, and has no mount option either. She can, however, activate a short booster to quickly escape danger. Another character specific mechanic is Leoric a Wraith King that resurrects wherever he wants. Killing Leoric has him enter a spirit form. You walk around with him to wherever you want until you, your respawn timer is finished, allowing you in this way to be on the front at all times or scout around whilst being dead. In this form, he can also strike his opponent to cheat death, thus respawn faster. All these mechanics being some few examples create overall much more interesting hero selections which might in fact influence other mobas to do the same as well in time. It really is an aspect that adds more to Heroes of the Storm by comparison, making it again even more fun. Now for that whole map objectives thing I touched on before. 
One of my main complaints with Dota 2 was that it had one map. One map. That's it. Other MOBAs have two or three, and some even up to five maps and game selections, more or less, I think. Meanwhile, all MOBAs include one premium 5 vs 5 map for games to be played on, and this one map becomes the primary map everyone plays on in the long run, rendering the other game types available for a more casual sort of option. Even so, these map options in these other games offer nothing more than simply the same concept, yet on a two-lane map with three vs three teams, or a one-lane map for one vs one, and what not. Heroes of the Storm differs here in a very significant way. This might actually be the very thing that sets it completely apart from other MOBA titles. There are a total of 9 maps in Heroes of the Storm, and they are all premium maps. Instead of having the same concept in each one of these maps, Blizzard has made each and every one of the 9 unique in both layout as well as strategy, creating entirely different gameplay elements for every one of them. Although the primary objective remains to be the same, destroy the enemy core. The way it is done differs so much from one map to the other, you could be playing a completely different game each time. The Garden of Terror map has a nighttime condition. Upon night falling, there are shambles around the map you need to kill to collect seeds from. Upon collecting 100 seeds, your Garden Terror is available to your team, a large golem-like monster that can be used to quickly rush down and push enemy forts. Then we have the Dragon Shire, based on the same template. Two shrines need to be activated and controlled by the same team, kind of like a domination match, upon which they will unlock a dragon statue in the middle of the map. Taking control of the statue needs to be done simultaneously, as both sides fight for control over the shrines. In doing so, you get yourself a dragon that deals extra damage, being able to push forward and help your team out. Then we have the Pirate Bay map, where players need to fight over gold coins that they can take from each other upon a takedown and hand them into Blackheart, the big old bad pirate of this map, so they can bribe him to bombard enemy locations. There is the Sky Temple map, the Spider Queen map, the Cursed Hollow map, the Haunted Mines, the Punisher and Immortal maps, coming to a total of 9 maps, each with their own layouts and strategies. This inclusion makes Heroes of the Storm by far the most enjoyable MOBA that I have ever played. Although some maps quickly become favorites and others not so much, it is a much needed experience in a game that, in other iterations, asks for you to do the same thing again and again for hours on end on the exact same map all the time. Adding more to this, all the neutral camps in this game can be bribed. Upon taking a camp, you capture it and the creeps or minions from it join your side and push in their respective lane, creating even more strategy for controlling points in the match and what not. The lore of the game is great, as can be expected. Well, there is actually no lore at all really, aside from some Nexus war thingy. The lore background is all related to the Blizzard lore which, despite my love or hate for their games, is pretty awesome. This aspect is a little unfair to compare to the other titles out there, since Dota was originally based on Warcraft 3, hence Blizzard Heroes. Then League of Legends was a copy of that which expanded into sci-fi realms as well. Then Dota 2 was a remake of Dota 1, and well, Blizzard in this case has the advantage of being able to create a game with the original heroes that they all took inspiration from. With their three world inclusion, Diablo, Warcraft and Starcraft, the style leans over to a League of Legends theme as it steps out of the fantasy only element, making it quite refreshing, same as League of Legends. Graphics are sublime, the best mobile graphics by far. No, they don't have a first person shooter geometry, neither HD textures, but for a fixed camera view in a rather cartoon palette, it is simply a wonderful title to look at with clear visuals and a high attention to detail. The camera is a little closer than some other mobiles, but feels much less restrictive than one would think, as the entire style of each map complements it perfectly. Maps are also left to right, which is a huge improvement for the camera as well, since your primary approach is always horizontal. The average screen today is a 16-9 ratio. Add the heads up display at the top and bottom and it makes this map layout quite necessary. I know I didn't cover this in my Dota 2 review, but the top to down layout of the map made it very annoying for me sometimes with regards to the view, especially if you have the camera fixed over your hero. Each map is complete with its own style from a total of 5 tile sets, pirates, gardens, harvest, Egypt and uh, Diablo-like realm. 
and include their own styles down to the very models used in camps and everything else. Sound is top notch, as can be expected, and the title is polished up real nice, with a minimum balancing issues and strategies, if any, and some handy mechanics that allow you to find party members before a match as opposed to going completely solo. The matchmaking system needs some help, and at times can be really frustrating. Whilst quick match games have you select your hero before the match starts, this can result in a cluster of problems at times since you do not select the hero based on teammate and enemy selections. This of course in the hero league is a completely different situation. Some small drawbacks here and there from time to time with regards to bugs with patch updates, Blizzard surprisingly is also releasing patches from time to time with little problems at all averaging out to a product that is in fact well taken care of, no pay to win transactions at all and plenty of things to explore and do including daily quests for extra gold and all those great maps and heroes to learn and master. They even have a tryout map so you can test out any character you want prior to purchasing them. For my final verdict I give Heroes of the Storm a thumbs up and a score of 8 out of 10. This is a title that any gamer should check out. I am sure it has the potential to get some of you hooked. The rest I believe you are in for some quality fun nonetheless, even for a short period. MOBA players will either love it or hate it. Casual gamers that like team based PvP titles should in fact really warm up to it I think. As for those that are into something different altogether, Heroes of the Storm has enough content to make it a title that I believe even they will have some fun with once they give it a chance. Of course, if you are strictly into a completely different genre of gaming, well, then there's little this title can do for you, to be honest, and probably not your best pick at all. For the MOBA fans out there, I hope I was able to perhaps justify some of the game design elements to Heroes of the Storm in this review. I know from experience that the largest part of people that dislike Heroes of the Storm are those that really miss some of those mechanics that are included in the other MOBA titles. I hope I was able to shine some light on why some of these choices actually fit this title and why it can in fact, due to these changes, end up being even more fun at times. As far as depth goes and the notion that it is dumbed down, well they have substituted items with talents and, and two hero skills for a more straightforward approach with almost the same amount of flexibility and with added objectives from a large selection of maps and a fast paced match to do it all in. It really balances back out, creating a lot of depth in team play strategy, even without the usual mechanics. What it lacks in some areas, it so makes up for in others, making it just as deep in the end for whoever wishes to spend the time to learn it. I recommend you check this title out guys, and if you're into mobile games altogether, check out my review for Dota 2 as well, I've got a link to it right here in the description below. That's it for me this time around. I hope you enjoyed the review and if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe for more videos right here on the digital creative front. I'll see you next time.